Sri Guru Raja's miracle on the bank of the Tungabhadra river. A couple was watching with keen interest the ripples of the Tungabhadra river. Paradoxically, the thoughts passing through their mind were like the waves of a turbulent sea. The breeze in that ambience was disturbing the leaves of the nearby peepul tree, Ashwatthya Vriksha, and the pleasant atmosphere under the tree though salubrious to their physical comfort, could not provide any solace to their mental turmoil. The couple belonging to Haveri had come to that spot in Bidarahalli on the bank of the Tungabhadra river. After knowing about the glory of that place and the people tree there, Bidarahalli should bring to our memory Sri Srinivasachar, a great pandit of that place. He had once gone to have darshan of Sri Raghavendra and had taken Tita Prasad in the Sri Mat that day, avoiding items cooked with mustard, thinking that it was an item to be eschewed during the Ashada Masa. He was not, however, aware that for the sake of a staunch bhakta, Sri Raghavendra had changed the age-old practice in the Sri Mat. And when Srinivasacha took the sacred rice given by Sri Raghavendra, symbolic of the Guru's parting benediction, and reached his place, the color of the mantrakshata given to him had changed from red to black when he opened his hand to proffer it to his elder brother. The latter, surmising that something wrong should have taken place, reprimanded Srinivasachar about it. Srinivasacha therefore went to the Sri Mat the next day and explained to Sri Raghavendra what all had taken place. Sri Raghavendra then appraised him that in recognition of the true bhakti of a devotee who had given mustard for puja naivedya without knowing that it was improper to use it during Ashada Masa. He had relaxed the age-old tradition to grace that bhakta. On getting this enlightenment, Sri Srinivasacha took Tita Prasad that day without abstaining from consuming mustard, in consequence of which the black mantrakshata of the previous day kept with him turned red again as detailed in part 1. It was at the same Bidrahalli of such fame that the couple was standing below the Ashwatha tree in deep contemplation. The Lord had said, Among trees, I am the Ashwatha tree. In part 7, it had been explained in the chapter on Sri Mushnam that the Ashwatha tree there has the divine presence of Sriman Narayana in it and that the tree itself is symbolic of Sriman Narayana's form. Adverting to the Ashwatha tree of Bidrahalli, it also has the divine presence of Sriman Narayana in it and carries the glory of bestowing all the benefits of a holy pilgrimage to places like the Pushkara Kshetra, Prayag, Kashi, Gaya, Badri and Sri Ramasetu. It will suffice if mere darshan is had of it as it embodies the sanctity of Sriman Narayana's presence in it and will confer all the benefits of a Yatra to Pushkarakshetra, an opinion voiced by Sri Vadiraja. Those who had seen Sri Shashi's artistic portrayal of the Sri Ashwatha tree of Sri Mushnam were simply astounded by the creativity of the artist. The peepul tree presenting the appearance of Sri Varaha Swami himself standing in that form. Here it can be seen in the line drawing how Sri Narayana looks in the form of an Ashwatha tree at Bidrahalli. The Ashwatha tree has several roots and they symbolize Sri Narayana's holy feet. The central portion of the tree is the middle portion of the Lord's physical frame, while the upper end presents the facial part. The strong protrusions of the tree 
are his shoulders and the branches are his hands. Thus, he is ever spread out and present in the peepal tree at Bidrahalli. The devout couple was standing there meditating upon such Srihari. According to the Shastras, the central portion of the peepal tree is revered as Vishnu, the bottom one as Brahma and the upper extremity as Ishvara. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva are identified with creation, protection, extermination and with the presence of all the three in that sacred tree, the divine air that circulates in that vicinity is believed to remove all sins and illnesses besides blessing the birth of offspring. The couple we have seen about had come to the bank of the Tungabhadra in Bidrahalli in the vicinity of such Ashwatha tree of divine potence with the prayer for their long-standing desire to be fulfilled. They were known as Madhvacharya and Bharati Bhai. The couple had immense bhakti towards Sri Guru Raja and they were of the belief that whatever the Almighty does is only for good. The barrenness in their life was a great torment for them as even after 22 years of their wedlock, they had not been blessed with progeny. Not being content with the kind of prayers they were indulging in, they decided that they should vow the performance of the most arduous Sankalpa Seva and as such came to Bidrahalli to accomplish that at the Ashwatha tree that had divine presence in it. They brought with them a silver Brindavana too along with other puja items in great obeisance and in the most orthodox manner. The miniature Brindavana had in it the Mritika of Sri Raghavendra. They had come there with immense faith that Seva at that place will bestow on them the same benefits as at the Mula Brindavana in Mantralaya where Sri Raghavendra was alive and radiating his grace on devotees approaching him with soulful devotion. Readers may recall here that the procedures to be followed for Sankalpa Seva explained in part 1 the efficacy of Mritika and how it should be worshipped if consecrated in a Mritika Brindavana and the method of performing Seva at home have all been covered in the earlier writings. In the appropriate context, Sankalpa Seva implies praying to Sri Guru Raja with single minded concentration and soulful devotion that there is none else for us than Him to look to for help. The degree of benefit to accrue from such worship will undoubtedly be commensurate to the intensity of our devotion. What we want to achieve. Therefore, depends upon the profundity of our concentration. In other words, it is in our hands to achieve what we want as the grace of the Guru. Madhvacharya Bharti Bhai kept the puja casket on the platform surrounding the Ashwatha tree, had their bath and then, and then adhering to the prescribed orthodoxies, performed the Sandhya Vandana Krishna Mantra Jabha. At sunrise, they took the oath for Sankalpa Seva in front of Sri Guru Raja. Guru Raja, we have no doubt been praying to Sri Hari unceasingly. Surely there is nothing that he cannot grace. But Sri Hari, when pray to through a guru like you, will grace beneficial results multifold. We, ordinary mortals, may think of Sri Hari when in need of his mercy. But if we shift the burden of our problems to you, such guardian knots will be certainly be un untied by you. It is with this strong hope and a sense of detachment from other allurements that we are commencing this Sankalpa Seva. Without moving from here, for seven consecutive days, we shall be doing the Seva. We submit to you, Guru Raja, that you should condescend to our supplication and grace us your mercy. 
they prayed and started their seva circumambulating the sacred peepul tree generally those doing sankalpa seva will circumambulate the brindavana a specific number of times both in the morning and evening at home they will do it with a picture kept conveniently for such circumambulation around it without any intake of food in the morning some devotees after the pradakshina namaskara will consume milk and have the teetha prasad in the afternoon they will abstain from sleep during day time and after taking bath in the evening again indulge in pradakshina namaskara before retiring for bed at night consuming only fruits milk then there is nothing wrong in following this as the prescribed procedures to advocate similar adherence but madhvacharya bharti bai who started the seva did not keep any count of their circumambulations and without any such limit for its adherence continued their pradakshina namaskara unceasingly in the forenoon the count of their circumambulation was much more than the normal number and they performed the pradakshina namaskara without taking even a small quantity of milk it was noon and yet they continued with their rigorous observance of the seva without taking any food circumambulating the ashwatha vriksha and the miniature raghavendra brindavana even in the evening they were continuing with the religious austerities unceasingly till sunset such rigorous seva which they were performing with madhvacharya chanting continuously the stotra shri purna bodha and many others of equal efficacy was not merely for being blessed with progeny but something beyond such normal craving yes the longing of that couple was to beget a son who would be noble excelling in all qualities and be one to guide others in the path of righteousness after the pradakshina namaskara late in the evening they cooked some rice and after offering it as naivedya mixed it mixed a little quantity of milk curd with it and consumed it for the night next morning they had their holy bath in the tungabhadra and from dawn till dusk continued their strenuous seva for seven days at a stretch the couple followed this kind of rigidity amazing everyone in that place it's very hard to do such seva with empty stomach undoubtedly the offspring to be born to the couple by the grace of the almighty and the blessings of shri guru raja will be an extraordinary one with uncommon attributes and virtues yes my grandfather father too may such an observation these were the kind of talks heard in the village during their seva on the eighth day early in the morning at 4 o'clock Bharti Bai had a dream in which Sri Raghavendra appeared in person. Sri Guru Raja told her in the dream, "Amma, your deservedness is important important. In fact, such a rigorous seva is not necessary at all. Whatever you have been longing for will material along and proffered a thing which caused immense joy to her." Bharti Bai with the tears of ecstasy blinding her eyes received the thing handed by the guru and tied it in a knot at the end of her sari all these happening in the dream on the morrow Bharti Bai experienced the peak of her elation wondering how such a thing was possible she drew the attention of her husband with great excitement and told him swami swami how can this uh, amazing thing be explained her heart brimming with joy what bharti please tell what it is did the swami appear in your dream yes he did appear in my dream but nothing can be said now can such a thing really happen swami what happened bharti i shall tell you after my bath please take out that vessel bharti said and dropped in it what shri guru raja had given her 
Swami, it is unbelievable. I cannot even think whether Sri Ashwatha Narayana and Sri Guru Raja could have really extended such a mercy to me. She stammered with the tears of ecstasy in her eyes. Please tell me everything in detail, Bharti. Of course, I can guess things to a certain extent from what you have put in the vessel. But there was something else too with that. How did it come about, Bharti? said the husband and made also the observation. Surely we shall have a son born to us. Is it not correct? I too am unable to fathom anything, Swami. I am now feeling like being in the air. Yes, Guru Raja, it is only when others experience how you are gracing your devotees, sitting alive in your Brindavana, that we can vent out our feelings to others and share our experiences with them. On hearing what his wife had said, Madhvacharya's eyes were welled with tears. A reading of the next chapter will, in fact, cause no different an experience to all of us and so let us proceed further.